Good morning, folks. The Mobile Observatory Project is back in the United States. We're in Warsaw, New York today. Folks, how easy is this? Seriously, incoming trans-equatorial coronal hole turns fully to face Earth, extending her magnetic fields off in Earth's direction. Meanwhile, Jupiter, so reflective we have horizontal glare lines heading in for perfect solar conjunction, and the earthquakes begin. USGS registering a 6.2 in the Kuril Islands, and folks, this could be their worst downgrade yet. We have six readings at 7.0 or higher, including two 7.2s. The red and green are the most reliable readings at 6.5 and 6.7, and nearly all measurements taken exceed the USGS report. We know that the event did not produce a tsunami, but also that the earthquakes continue to be underreported. I'd also like to note the beautiful earth spot sitting right next to that quake zone, and just like with the six-pointer in Alaska last week, the reinforced wind drive between them. The Earth Spots hypothesis is featured in the Electric Earth and Sun section of SuspiciousObservers.org. Quick ice update. The Arctic up north continues to be well below average, but also continues the two-year bounce back from the record lows in 2012. The Antarctic in the south still breaking monthly records on its way to an all-time high. However, I will like you to note a couple of storms surged warm air into the southern circle last week, taking us below the record-breaking Antarctic ice levels for the first time in almost a year. Experts do expect a comeback. Let's go round the world with the pressure overlay. Purple is low, yellow is high. Some scattered precip across this region and more cold air for New Zealand, all in all though a lighter day than most. You will notice Typhoon Matmo here, powerful low pressure cell drenching the Philippines, but luckily appears like its northern shift will continue, allow it to miss the Philippines and might even sneak up on Shanghai from the land side. In Europe, the power low is still in the North Atlantic, but you never want to discount even a weak low drawing from the Mediterranean heat. I'll run the infrared here so you can see just how energetic those southern systems can be with even minimal pressure gradient. North American notes, we now have two weak lows potentially developing, one west of Mexico and the other in the Atlantic, which has been utterly quiet thus far. As for imminent watches tonight, the Canadian lows will continue drawing heat and moisture to the border and beyond, while I'd also like to mention a non-pressure based wash with moisture funneling in from the Atlantic in a big way. That can't be ignored, and while the most severe storms tonight will stay in the Midwest and South Central Canada, it will be a wet one for a good portion of the country. In the rush to get back into the states yesterday, we didn't get a chance to show the second gamma burst from the 19th, Centaurus and Sadus. The cosmic ray fluctuations were very strong as well, and this is very much what we expect to become the new normal, especially with the heliosphere as weak as can be. Very low solar wind readings, now nearly two days below 300 kilometers per second, and a lack of solar max type flaring for the majority of this entire cycle. Folks, this is probably our most important mid-range and long-term issue here. Cosmic rays are going to play a big role in the climate, but you need the background. For those new here, you can click the name Suspicious Observers to head to our channel homepage. Below the Mobile Observatory Project picture in our most recent uploads, you'll find the playlists. Climate change is a vital one. We have not been told the full story there. The other playlists are highly recommended as well. Anyway, we don't expect any major flaring ramps soon. Just got one relevant sunspot group on the south with beta polarity, but nicely separated. No magnetic mixing. The central coronal hole faded after the quake, leaving just the north and the south. Pretty strong openings though. The southern hole is negative and therefore our weak, long or more positive influence is about to change. Another day or so and we'll be in the red. Folks, in three days the website will be one year old. If you have renewal questions, guys, just shoot them my way. For everyone else, we had about 60 hours of discussion, over 300 evening news shows, and a number of special features. That'll continue as long as I breathe. I just wish I didn't have to charge the whopping amount of $3 per month. Check the north incoming as we close with shots of our star. Eyes open. No fear at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.